Welcome back to the Trade Hacker Mindset Podcast. In this episode, I want to talk to you about trading for generational wealth. Trading the markets can be difficult to master and seemingly just out of reach. Professional traders have a secret. Trading requires total mental and emotional control. It requires the Trade Hacker Mindset. All right, so let's jump into this topic about trading for generational wealth. So recently, I was on a seven-day Caribbean cruise. Uh, we went to, by the way, the, the ship that we were on, kind of a side note, has nothing to do with the topic of this podcast, but the, uh, the ship that we were on, it was a carnival cruise. The ship was called Mardi Gras. And it was, it's a, it's a pretty new ship just built a few years ago. And this thing was unbelievable. I mean, it had a roller coaster on it, water slides, uh, you know, obviously a, several pools and, uh, about 6,500 people. So I was not really actually very high on going on a cruise. I was, I was more interested in just going on a destination, but I will tell you, I liked it and I would probably do it again. Maybe ate too much, maybe drank a little bit too much, but overall, good experience. We went to the Bahamas, we went to Turks and Caicos, and we went to Dominican. So pretty cool stuff. But my, my point is, on this cruise, I took some time and I, I did a lot of kind of reflecting. Um, and, and specifically what I'll talk about here is, is reflecting on my trading and, and really the mental state of my trading, you know, this year, 2024 has not been what I had hoped for, you know, from a, from P and L standpoint, you know, a lot of, you know, I had such a good 2023 that I had really high expectations going into 2024, uh, probably too high of expectations going into 2024. And a lot of the, and you know, this is just trading. A lot of the things that worked last year did not work well in 2023, in 2024. So, you know, I've had to, I've had to kind of step back a couple times and, and restructure what I'm doing, refocus the, you know, kind of the, the strategic way that I'm, uh, that I'm, that I'm implementing my strategies and things like that, which is, which is an ongoing process for trading, right? You, you, you never have just one thing that you can continue to, to do the same way over and over and over. I mean, we're, we're always adjusting to market conditions, to volatility conditions, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, so I, so on this cruise, I, I, you know, I, I was away from trading. I did a little bit of trading, but I, I, it was really the first time in quite a while that I was able to detach to the, to the extent that I did and gave me some, you know, some, some time to reflect. And, and one of the things that I have been kind of thinking about and, and thought a lot about was that I want to share with you today is the, the idea around, <clears throat> you know, what are you trading for? And, and obviously it's to make money, but what I've found for myself is that when I focus my goals and my attention on a longer term perspective, it, it helps me focus better on the process for the short term. So, you know, one, one thing that I, and I've talked about this before is I don't like to set financial goals in the short term for trading. You know, I, I, I never want to say, I want to make this much a day or this much a week or this much a month or even this much a year. I think doing that, at least for me, is detrimental because then I start, even if it's on a subconscious level, I will start making trades or making trading decisions based on that goal that I'm trying to achieve as opposed to just trading what the market is telling me to trade at that specific time, trading the setups, trading the, you know, the specific criteria that I should be trading based on the market, uh, instead of, you know, trying to force trades to get to that goal that I want. So I don't like setting short-term financial goals. Uh, I am okay setting long-term, you know, wealth building type goals, but on the, but on the short duration, I really try to keep all of my goals process driven. And, and so one thing that I, 
that I realized is, is when I have the mental kind of, uh, the mental focus around building, you know, generational or legacy type wealth, that really translates well into me focusing on process driven goals in the, in the short term. Now, I, I don't know if this is just, I don't know why I have always thought this way or, or, you know, what it is, it, you know, it's probably has a lot to do with my parents and, and, you know, the things that they kind of taught me, or I, I kind of picked up on from them, uh, you know, leading from example, but I've always had this kind of idea of wanting to build generational type wealth or, you know, creating a legacy, not just from a monetary standpoint, but from a, from just a, just an overall, you know, I've always, I've always admired families that have kind of a, a legacy and, and something that's been passed on down from generation to generation, whether it's wealth, whether it's a business, whether it's just a, a way of doing things, traditions, uh, you know, those kind of things I've, I've always kind of admired. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. In fact, I mean, an example of this is, you know, when I graduated from college and I got my first job, like I, I started, I started funding a life insurance policy. You know, I started stuffing money into a life insurance policy. It was cash value. A, you know, it's, it's an efficient, tax efficient way to, to just save money. But, you know, I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. So I, I, didn't, I didn't really have a need for the death benefit of life insurance. But I knew I would get married at one point. I, at some point. I knew I would have kids at some point. And so by doing that at an early age, you know, you're paying for a very cheap cost of insurance because I was so young, knowing that I would benefit from having it later in life. And, and, and I still have those policies that I started when I was 22 years old. So, you know, that, that's just an idea. That, that's just a, an example of kind of the mindset around generational wealth building. And having that mindset around trading I think at least for me, it helps me focus on the, you know, on the day to day. If it helps me make better trading decisions, if my trading decisions are based on long-term generational wealth building as if, as opposed to short-term profits. And so I've just, I've just noticed that my trading does a lot worse when I'm focused on short-term profits, when I'm focused on long-term generational wealth building, my short-term profits come better. <laughs> and so, you know, I think, I think, you know, I mean, you've heard this before, making money is a mindset, right? You could put the same two people in different situations and, and, and one with the, you know, the better mindset around money is going to make more, keep more 10 times out of 10. Right. And, and so I think, you know, a lot of people just from a, a mental standpoint around making money, whether it's your career, your job, trading, whatever it is, have a mindset of just, I just want to, I just need to make enough money to pay my bills, right? I'm going to get this job and it pays me $80,000 a year. That's going to cover my mortgage, my car, my, you know, family expenses and give me a little bit of money to go on a couple of, you know, a vacation or two a year. You know, I think that's a lot of people's mentality. The problem is then something catastrophic happens, something bad happens unexpectedly, an expense that they weren't thinking about, that they didn't budget in, and now they've got to rack up credit card debt and, and deal with that, and now they're behind the eight ball. And once you get behind the eight ball, sometimes you can never get back ahead of it. And so the idea of building, you know, if you have the mindset of building generational wealth, then you're gonna be able to take care of all those little things that you wanna do, but you're also going to have that cushion. You're also going to have the, the freed up mental capital of not having to worry about making your rent or your mortgage payment. You're gonna have that freed up mental capital of not having to worry about, uh, you know, if, 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 if you go to an expensive dinner. You know, and, and so that's just such a, a different mindset. And when then you go to do your trading, you're not thinking about the profits that you're going to make on this trade 
to pay for dinner. You're not thinking about the profits that you have to make on this trade to pay your rent or your mortgage. You're thinking about this trade as a very tiny, minute, minimal piece of, of your generational wealth building and the thousands of other trades that you're going to do in the, in the years to come. And this is, this is, this is nothing, right? This is nothing in the grand scheme of things. And so you're, you're, you're focusing less of your attention on the outcome of this one trade because it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of all the thousands of trades and the generational wealth that you're going to build. This one trade means nothing. And I, I think that mentality and that mindset around trading could really help not only your, you know, long-term generational wealth building, but it can really help on your day-to-day -day focus of each individual cra trade because now they have much less importance. Now, that doesn't mean that you get sloppy and you just start putting on a bunch of little trades because you think it doesn't matter. It, it's actually the contrary. When, when I, when I am focused on short-term profits, I tend to overtrade. I will trade too much. I'll trade just to trade. I'll put on trades and then after the fact be like, why did I just do that? You know, so, so I'll, 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 I'll over trade when I'm focused mentally on the long term on generational wealth building, I will be very, very selective when it comes to my trading. And that that's one thing that I, you know, I've been back from this cruise after I've done, you know, a lot of this writing and reflecting. And, and one thing that I've, I've really focused on and I've, I've noticed about my trading is that I've become over the last few weeks, I've become much more selective and that has helped my trading. I, I mean, I can see it in my PL. I can see it in my trade results. I can, I can feel it in the way that I feel at the end of the day. You know, at the end of the day, if I've just been hammering out trades all day, just trading rapid fire and, you know, I've, I've, I've done all these trades. A, it typically doesn't reflect well in my P&L. And B, I'm completely mentally exhausted at the end of the day. You know, when I have to upload all my trades to TraderSync to, uh, to, you know, to reconcile all my trades and, and get them all uploaded, it is like the most painful thing because A, there's a ton of trades that I have to upload and then just kind of mark and tag and, and you know, put the setup on and, and reconcile and all that stuff. So it's mentally exhausting. And, and especially if I over traded and I know I, and then I have to tag my trades as mismanaged or discretionary or, you know, all these different things that I do, that is, that takes a mental toll on me from a trading perspective. When I feel the best at the end of the day is when I've been very selective in, in picking my spots and taking just a few trades, which typically translates to more profits. And at the end of the day, when I have to upload them, if I can just upload a few, it's, it's a lot less mentally draining. And so I know I'm kind of rambling and going off topic and, and touching on some different things, but I think it all ties together. And that is around the, the mental, uh, the mental state of trading for generational wealth versus trading for short-term profits. And I think the, the quicker that you can build that, that generational wealth building mindset, not only around trading, but just, just in general, I think the better, the better you will be from an economic, from a financial standpoint, uh, in a lot of areas of your life. In fact, I've, you know, I've got, my kids are teenagers. Okay. So they are far from starting to even know or have a clue of what they want to do when they grow up, right. From a career or money-making standpoint or, or really from anything, but I've been having this conversation with my kids. Uh, in fact, just this past weekend, I had this conversation with my kids where I talked about, you know, when you, when you get to the point where you're going to start thinking about what you want to do for a living, number one, it shouldn't be about chasing the money. Number two, I don't want you to do something just because you make enough to pay the bills. And I went through that, this whole conversation with them about, you know, 
exactly what I just kind of talked to you guys about, about how I bought life insurance and, and started funding life insurance before I even was even married or had kids, how I, you know, have always had this mindset around building a legacy, building generational wealth. And I want my kids to hopefully take that mindset at a very early age and start thinking about when they have a career that it's, and they start doing things that they think about their kids and their grandkids. And it just becomes this perpetual cycle of legacy building and, and wealth building uh, across generations. And so I think the earlier that you can start having that mindset, the better. And so I'm, you know, my kids are teenagers, so I don't know if they took anything away from what I said, but you know what? I'm going to keep dripping this information on them on a consistent basis so that over time they, it does start to sink in. And so by the time that they are 18, 22, 30 years old, that they really have started to, you know, they've heard it from me so many times that it just becomes a part of what they know they should do. And so anyway, that's, that's my focus. And that that's kind of my going to be my, you know, focus going forward. I've, I've got notes written on my windows and some notes, you know, up by my computer to help me kind of keep that front and center, because I know that I will be a better trader in the short term. If my focus is on the longer term generational wealth building. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, always let me know, drop me a line in our community, uh, or info at navigationtrading.com is my email until the next episode. Talk to you soon.